rose-colored tales from a Minnesota childhood. When I was a boy growing up in Red Wing, Minnesota, life was full of adventure and mystery. I had a gang of friends, and we had free reign over the neighborhood, forest, and streets. Life tended to be hard much of the time, but it did make us tough. My brother and I had to walk two miles to school in thick snow and heavy blizzards, and it was uphill both ways. Uh, perhaps I'm exaggerating a little, but life was not as cushy as it is today. None of us looked at the world and demanded that everybody coddle us. We kids really didn't expect the same things as kids do today. For starters, nobody's mama drove them to school in the family station wagon, not even when it was raining or snowing. My brother and I just bundled up, put on our boots and a warm jacket, and dealt with it. My parents didn't want to have a couple little sissy boys on their hands. School was tougher back then, too. I couldn't get away with anything during recess at Sunnyside School. That was because of the narc. That was our nickname for the infamous yard duty lady. One time, when I was in second grade, I ignored the narc's directions to stay away from the snow hill. That was a very bad idea, because she didn't have a special nickname for no reason. She made me grab the largest snow boulder that I could find on the snow hill and carry it over to the school building. She then sat me down and put the snow boulder right on my lap. Looking back as a teacher, I actually kind of admire the narc because she really knew how to make a point. I sure stayed away from that snow hill after that. Entertainment was even tougher back then too. There were no video game systems, 24-7 kids TV stations, or daily activities planned by parents. Instead, we had to rally the neighborhood kids to dig in the mud, play kick the can, or run around and play tag. That took time, but it was worth it. Of course, every evening ended in at least one neighborhood fight or spat, but remember, we were tough. And we liked it that way. And after Saturday morning cartoons were over, Nobody just ran out to play. No, we had chores to do. Sometimes we had to catch up on a whole week's worth, in fact. This was our quality time with Dad. That's right, we could spend time with Dad while we mowed the lawn, pulled the weeds, and even tilled the garden if we were lucky. Sometimes he would even let us wield a tool with him. I'm not sure we liked it but it did make us tough. And maybe even a little worn out on occasion. And after we were done with chores on Saturdays, nobody was making any plans for us. That's right. Kids were not continually running off to soccer games, football practice, baseball games, piano recitals, Norwegian school, dance rehearsals, gymnastics, or karate, at least not in my neighborhood. Usually mom and dad just pointed my brothers and me to the front door and told us to play outside. It really didn't matter if it was summer, winter, fall, or spring. We needed to go play outside. At about the same time, all my friends around the neighborhood were being kicked out of their houses and our daily adventures would begin. Our favorite adventure was exploring. We lived near a wooded bluff, so that provided ample room to run, play, jump, climb, and usually stay out of trouble. We never ventured very far into the woods, however, due to the dreaded hood. The Hood was a legendary criminal who lived in the woods and whose sole goal was to hurt children. We knew the Hood was real because of the old treehouse that sat deep in the woods. We were so scared that we never even bothered to investigate it. 
Looking back, I'm pretty sure my parents propagated the story of the hood to keep us from venturing too far away from home. I must remember that lesson in my own parenting because it worked splendidly. Now I said that we usually stayed out of trouble, but that was not always the case. One time, my neighborhood friends and I stumbled upon a farmer's shed out in his field. We thought for sure that it was abandoned, in spite of the fact that the door was locked and all the windows were securely in place. We reasoned that the shed probably used to belong to the hood, so we made short work of all the windows with some well-placed stones. No sooner had we broken the last window when an angry farmer came out of the corn yelling at us. I'd like to say that we all ran and escaped the wrath of the farmer, but we didn't. The farmer let my parents take me to task, and I think that was the time that I graduated from being grounded to my mama's wooden spoon. There's nothing that toughens up a little boy faster than getting a few good spankings with his mama's wooden spoon. As you might have guessed, my early years in Red Wing, Minnesota hold a special place in my heart. My memories are certainly shaded and colored by time. Maybe we weren't as tough as I remember. But I'm hoping that those days of being a rough and tumble little boy will live on in this story long after I'm gone.